Azmina. That was a brilliant session, very helpful, insightful. Good morning, everyone. Actually, it's good noon. Today, we are here to talk about cities of future at the crossroads of enriching experiences with AI and sustainability. Hi, I'm Anushka. And I'm Ritu Parna. We are from Honeywell Design Studio. Today, we are going to talk about some of the use cases and a designer's lens on how to make cities more smart, resilient, and sustainable. Imagine you're headed to this venue, and while deboarding, you forget to collect your belongings. Now you have misplaced your bag and even your phone. You will be anxious and panicked. A similar incident had happened with a Maldivian tourist who was traveling to the Garuda Mall in Bangalore back in June. What happened next is the best part. The police was able to track the vehicle and retrieve all his belongings, returning it to him, and all this happened within a few hours. Amazing, isn't it? This was made possible by the Honeywell City Suite, and we are fortunate to be a part in designing it. Le let's look at how the design works. So basically, when, we, when the tourist was guided by the nearby police to the emergency call box, on pressing the SOS button, he got connected to the command and control center in Bangalore. They verified his details with the help of the video camera, and the same was passed on to the police. The police then verified all the details, and with the help of number plate recognition cameras, were able to track the vehicle and give a happy ending to this story. So, Honeywell City Suite is actually an application which helps governments and administrators to take a wide range of actions, making cities vibrant, safe, and sustainable for its citizens. Currently, it is hosting in more than 70 plus cities worldwide, and in India, it has focused more than 60 plus cities. It connects 1 lakh IoT sensors and devices, impacting 100 million lives. Well, that was an amazing anecdote, Ritu Parna, about the Maldivian tourist. Let's look at some of the important aspects of a smart city. Designing for scale, designing for sustainability, and designing for technology. Let's deep dive into designing for scale. Well, we all know cities are like living organism, constantly growing and ever evolving. When something has to be designed for this scale, it is important to follow a unified approach. Uh, in a control center in a particular day, there are thousands of alerts coming. Imagine 100 per minute. An infinite amount of data points to be interpreted by an operator. In order to make this task easy and comprehensible for our operators, we have come up with a three-screen approach. What you see on the left is the alerts view, where all the alerts from across the city are presented in a list view, categorized by their priority, high, medium, and low. This enables our operator to take informed decision and plan their day, meaning critical alerts first. What you see in the center is a map view, which shows the exact location of the alert, where it was raised from, as well as the nearby sensors, giving our operator the much needed contextual view. On the right is video view, which gives the operator on-ground situation awareness, making them more aware of what is happening on-ground. All the three screens work in conjunction with each other. Well, as designers, we all know how important is context, right? So let's deep dive into the map view, which is the contextual view. What you see here are sensors, camera sensors highlighted in blue to grab users' attention, as well as their respective alerts in critical, medium, and low. The operator can also on-demand view the surveillance of the city in case they want. We have bought a city onto the map where our sensors do the talking and system crack the most optimized codes. But we all know that systems and sensors cannot work on their own. We need people, people like you and I. Some of us who sit in fancy offices, while some who bring the food for us. Some who keep the city safe and running, while some who build the city for us. The entire solution encompasses use cases for all of these persona to ensure city is a delight for its residents. You're absolutely right, Anushka. Speaking about residents, do you know that, that by 2050, there'll be 6.6 .6 billion people who will be residing in cities globally? Yes, I'm talking about the need of the R, designing for sustainability. Let me ask you a question. 
So how often do you remember to switch off any device, especially after use, maybe the microwave or the geezer? And I guess we are all on the other side, and then this happens. This is very relatable, I'm sure. So as much, as much as it is relatable to us as well, it was very interesting to design for energy conservation, especially because we were able to make an impact at various levels. At an individual level or a household level, we are now able to manage the energy usage, especially during peak hours. This helps in keeping the electricity bills low. At a facility level, with the use of past data sets, now we are able to show projections which help the facilities keep their usage optimized. And at a city level, after all these individual efforts combined, KIP keeps a tap on the carbon emissions of the city, thus helping the city to achieve its carbon neutrality goals. While all this is happening in the forefront of sustainability, there is a solid background of resiliency as well. With the use of alternative power, of microgrids and AI-based power load management, now we are able to give uninterrupted power supply, especially to critical services during natural calamities or blackouts. This helps the city services running, making the cities more resilient. Let's have a look at the design. So this dashboard on the screen which you see is the dashboard which the operator sees just to overview what's the city's energy usage like. So this is all the data which is pulled in, and the operator does this manually and remotely. So we are now able to avoid interdepartmental challenges and also manual delays. So let's get into the dashboard a little more in detail. On the top, what you see is the summary bar, which allows the cities to see the whole energy consumption and the whole backup. If you come one level down, there's microgrid overview and there's energy overview. This helps in compartmentalizing the same data into individual facility and their respective data. And the one in the below is the site load. So this is where you have an individual infrastructure shown over a span of 24 hours, and you're showing the demand of that particular facility. On the right-hand side, also, you will see a few parameters. These are nothing but parameters which might affect the energy usage which we are trying to track, like weather or other alerts which are arising due to the microgrids out there. In the interest of time, we will dive into one of the widgets, actually two. So the first one is site load. So here, if you see, the gray line is nothing but the projection which we are doing with the help of the past data sets. And whenever it crosses the red line, which is the threshold, the load AI-based load management enables switching from the main grid source to the microgrid. Thus, we are now able to save some demand, and also we are doing certain cost saving. Through this graph, we are not just able to show these values, but also the future predictions that whenever there is a spike going to happen, and the operator can take the necessary steps beforehand. So when all this is happening, at a facility level, as I said, there's a bound impact at a city level. How do we measure that? So we are showing a widget, which is called city's carbon emission. And here we are able to tap how much carbon emissions has been saved, and what's the target of the city. Also, we are enabling two consecutive years, like past year data, just to compare how the previous year's performance were and whether the city needs to revisit its goal mid-year. While all this is happening in the sustainability front, there's a huge role of technology as well. You are right, Ritu. Sustainability is indeed the need of the hour. You know, talking about carbon footprint, Bangalore alone has a population of 1.3 crore. It's crazy, right? With so many different people come diverse challenges, like waste management, traffic management, utilities, citizen safety. The Maldivian tourist example was actually designed for women's safety, which connects them to the nearest police headquarters. Let's look at some of the day-to-day -day use cases which the solution is trying to solve. Well, Bangalore traffic is world famous. I think we all know that. Imagine in our traffic-ridden roads, a traffic-free corridor is created for an ambulance to pass while all the signals are synced together. Can you think about this happening a few years ago, the amount of manual effort it would require? While designing for this, we wanted to give an operator the view exactly of where the ambulance is moving along with its respective cameras. As the ambulance moves ahead, a fresh set of cameras are present to the operator. 
This enables them to coordinate with the on-ground police as well as view what is happening on the, as, as a situation on ground. This is just one of the examples. Let's look at another one. Can you imagine the amount of waste generated in the city? Waste collection can be a real challenge. Here, our AI-based waste management system comes in handy. Imagine a waste in your neighborhood is reaching its maximum capacity. The AI algorithm looks at all the waste bins in the vicinity, as well as the trucks nearby, and maps the nearest truck to the nearest uh, pickup point, recommending the most optimized role. Previously, these trucks used to go sequentially one after the other. Imagine the amount of truck rolls which the solution is reducing. This view is also presented to the operator in case he wants to override the AI algorithm based on the on-ground discrepancy. Well, these are just some of the examples which the solution is trying to solve. Let's look at the summary and overall impact which the solution is making. We talked about designing for scale. We are digitizing the solution, integrating it with multiple subsystems, and making collaboration between departments easier. Uh, the emergency call box example is a testament to reduction in crime rate. Uh, Ritu talked about designing for sustainability. The operator is able to view a city's energy consumption, alternative energy, as well as microgrids available in case of natural calamities sitting remotely in a single location. We talked about designing for technology. Resources are limited and people are more. We want to make resources available for people. We are solving this with technology. Just to give you a quick example, back in 2017 in Rajkot, there were huge floods and the government used the system, public announcement, visual message boards, to redirect their citizens into less waterclogged areas. As wonderful as this sounds, creating a solution which was modular, future-proof, had so many different integration, was ex an exciting and a daunting task. It was no easy feat. <laughs> Definitely. That brings us to the last segment that is behind the designer's lens. So we're going to share some major takeaways which we have had while designing this application. Let's get started. The first one is understanding super users. So there might have been a time when you were a kid and you entered the kitchen to make a cup of tea and it might have been quite challenging, right? But in the same kitchen, when our elders made dishes, they aced at everything. Now that's what we call a super user. In our case, when we were interacting with the city operators, they were the same. When we looked at anything and everything in our field research as a big design problem to be solved, it was only after interacting and deep diving with these operators that we got to know that few of them were their conveniences and expertise, and we learned to differentiate it from their pain points. Hence, understanding the users is very core. The second one is evolving through the product. So there's always a day one, there is a day 600 in the product. And especially for a data intensive application like this, you will always be presented with loads and loads and loads of data. And you will have to take a call as to what's the apt amount of information that needs to go on the screen. The way we did it, we approached the problem by compartmentalizing this into three buckets. As you saw in the design, there was an alerts view, a map view, and a video view. So this initial categorization actually helped us to reduce the information overload to a great extent. Then, as and when we proceeded with the design, with the user journeys, and came to know of the use cases, we started adding elements like hovers, pop-ups, notification bars, so on and so forth. So it's always an evolutionary process which goes on as and when you start empathizing with the journeys and with the flows. So the third one is being adaptive to chaos. I'm sure everyone must have heard the term agile in product development. It's, it's a very fairly common term, right? So sometimes when things don't go as per plan is when you, know, you have some late schedules, you have some last minute workshops, you have new stakeholders coming in who start giving their point of views and you're like, oh my god, what's going on? So while all this is going on, the, the core agenda is to stick to the process so that you can actually navigate better through the chaos. So for example, if you're having a deadline and you need user feedback, you're not getting the dates or you're not getting schedules, maybe reaching out to an SME would be a great idea where you can get that necessary feedback. Also, if there are too many workshops happening all together and you have too much to synthesize, please look out for biases because majority of the points which come in the point of synthesis are often the biases which creep in. So there needs to be a bias check. The next one is my personal favorite. 
that's automate wherever necessary. So we were designing for city operators. These were people who were basic level of education. They were not tech savvy, but rather tech dependent. And hence, how much ever the world means to us, like we need to do AI, we need to do automation, it's very important to look at how we are deploying it on ground. We need to understand the user's context. We, do, we don't need to take the decisions, like the automation doesn't need to take the decisions, but rather assist the user in taking those decisions with solid data backed up insights. So that's more like tech for enablement, which we are doing, rather than tech for eradicating. The last but not the least is designing the whole task. As Anushka mentioned, the City Suite application is not a one-stop shop. It's a culmination of many platforms, many third-party applications, devices out there running in tandem. So whenever there is one graph to be shown on the screen, it requires to pull data from three different sources, host it on two different platforms, send it to cloud, bring it back from cloud, and then finally render it on the operator's screen. The operator doesn't need to know all this, but, but you as a designer always need to keep this in mind because every data point from where it arises and the on-ground implication of your design flow is what matters just like the professor did in Money Heist. So these were some of the takeaways which we have had through our process of designing. So the next time when you see such installations or devices out there, you will know how this works. Thank you. Thank you.